Hey everybody, it's me, Edward Jones, back with a new video, back from another gun show. You see my hat's looking a bit ratty right now. I've been wearing it um, while I've been doing some doing some work around the house and on the truck and wherever else I have to do work. Uh, the hat tries to follow me with wherever, um, wherever I go. No, I haven't, I haven't been wearing it very often. I may have actually replaced this hat. I still going to keep a patch though. But uh, this hat's getting uh, see a little torn up, so we'll see how things look down the road. But I went to a gun show. Right now, this is a, I'm recording this on a Sunday. And there was a gun show at the South, at the South Carolina State uh, State Fairgrounds uh, throughout the weekend. So I went yesterday on Saturday. Um, I rode my bike to the show. I wasn't a uh, my wife wasn't a uh, ride with a friend, but uh, he wasn't. I guess he was. He wasn't. He wasn't up for it at the time. So I said, okay, well, I rode my bike to to the gun show. Uh, it's not the first time I've done that. It's actually a pretty good bike ride. I think it's um it's very uh, it's very good for fitness and um. <laughs> It was weird, and it's not the first time I've done this. I left the show, and you know, I left the show with a with a novel and a pair of socks. No, well, not well, really, well, actually, three pairs of socks. And I was, my grandmother called me at the show, and she said, "I told her I was, I told her, she called me and said I was doing I said, I'm at a gun show. I said I just bought a I just bought a, a pair of socks." And she was laughing at me, you know, saying, "What kind of were they wool socks?" I said, "Yeah, they're wool socks." Then she said. Well, did he got long johns over here? I was like, um, no, I didn't see any. So you know, you need to have long johns when you're riding your bike because your legs are out and the cold air, and, and she means well. <laughs> um, but uh, I got, you know, I got the. Well, first, I want to talk about the book. Uh, you remember a while back, I mentioned a book called uh, "No Good Like It Is." That was that was from last that was from last year, and you know, the author Mike Long. Let me give a shout out to him. He. Uh, He's at the show. I met him. I met him several times. I actually did a video. Talked it. Well, I did a video after I spoke to him at the, at the show I went to. Um, that video is called uh, Demeanor, um, I believe. Demeanor. Yeah, he uh, he talked about my de the, the demeanor I had, and he was a, you know he was in Vietnam, and he, you know he af you know af long after that he's you know he he's written some novels, and the first book he wrote was No Good Like It Is, and I finally finished it. Uh, some time ago, some months ago, which I may have to do. I made if I haven't done a review on it, I don't think I've done a review on it. I may have to do one, put them on my to do list. But he has a, he has a, a sequel that's been out for some time, and I decided to go get the sequel, Dog Soldier Moon. And you see, he got the uh, gold medal award from Military Writer Society of America, and he's even autographed this book. You see that it says Edward. Here's the dude in the afro. <laughs> And there's a uh, Mike Long and there's his data right there. Dude in the Afro that refers to uh, when he when he came up with the cover art for this book. You can see the dog soldier on the front. You see how big his hair is. His I believe he said his uh, I think he said it was his his daughter or his granddaughter saw it and she said, "No, who's the guy with the Afro?" <laughs> and she you know he he laughed about it. You know you know these you know, obviously these 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 are it's a feather headdress. You know and there's a picture of Mike on the back. Um, a little synopsis on, on him and a little bit of a summary on the book. But uh, yeah, I got the book. You know, I bought it for ten bucks. I was this is, this is actually the, the one thing I want. This is the thing I wanted to get from the show because I enjoyed the book so I enjoyed no good like it is. And this is basically a continuation of that of the same story, the same characters, um, uh, Dolby Walls and Jimmy Melton. And um, this book so far it seems to be, seems is looking pretty good. Uh, it has a very interesting uh, beginning. I won't, I won't spoil it for you guys if you ever decide to get the book. But I do believe it's available on uh, Kindle. I think you can find maybe able, might be able to find it on Amazon. Of course, I don't have a, I don't have a, I don't have a, a tablet, so I gotta go with paper. But uh, like I said, I got this book. Hopefully, I can finish this up and uh, do a review on it. Here's a pair. Of, here's the sock. Here are the socks that I got. And I was walking by. You know, I was looking around. I said, oh, "Sock." You know. Wool blend socks for seven fifty, <laughs> and I couldn't pass up because the boots I wear. I wear engineer boots every day, and they are comfortable when I have wool socks, like you know, thick wool socks on, even in summertime. That's just that's just how I roll, you know. And you know, I remember looking at this. And I said, you know, leave it to me to go to a gun show and buy socks. Uh, <laughs> and the guy, you know, the guy I bought it from, he laughed and he was happy that I came over and you know. Did some business with him, so they feel they feel real good. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure they're real, com real comfortable to wear. Now, the reason why it's a two day thing because well, Saturday I was like I said, I rode my bike to the, I rode my bike 
uh, to the to the gun show, and I took my uh, I took my first aid kit with me. Now I left it on, I left it on top of my bike. Uh, when I went there, I went inside and I came. I went there for several hours. I came back outside. And it was gone. I'm like what? The, so some Fruit Loop stole my first aid kit. Who takes Who takes just a first aid kit? You know. Um, but you know, I didn't have it secured, so I guess that's you know that's what to be expected. They didn't take my helmet, so I'm mean, I'm happy. I'm mean, actually happy about that. Um, so I said, you know, I just I just pat. You know, I count as a loss. You know, one of those things that happened. Well, the reason why I have it now is because well, my friend uh, my friend Jeremy he was he couldn't go to the, he couldn't go to the to the gun show with me on Saturday, but he said he had, he said you know he's willing to go on Sunday. I said y'all go with you on Sunday. I told him about I have my first aid kit. So we're walking inside. I go up to the front desk after I, you know, get my get my hand stamp and pay my, t you know, pay my eight bucks. I go over to the side and say, "What in the? Did someone turn that in? <laughs> um, this this someone like where where did that uh? Did someone bring that in today?" And I said, "I told my, I explained my loss. My, you know, my first aid kit was someone took it off my bike, and then and then on one of the um one of the guys at the door asked, you know, where you know, where'd you last saw it? I said, "I had a bike parked on the fence. I had it had it, had it locked up to a fence." And it had it on my bike and it was gone. I explained to them, I explained uh, a few things that were inside of it, and then lay the lay the front door. Said, "Yep, you don't, have, don't go any further. It's yours." I said, "Shoot, it even has my initials on the back of it. Edward Matthew Jones." <laughs> and God is good because <laughs> I count this as a loss, you know. Um, and I, you know, it's, it may seem like nothing. It's a first aid kit, but I just, so there's one of the things I keep with me every day because I ride a bike even and even when I even when I'm driving, I like to have a first aid kit with me because. You know, I've I've been in accidents before. You know, I had had the car accident. You know, a few months ago, and I've been a, I've been in a bike accident um, a few years ago. Where I actually flew off the bike going downhill. I was okay. You know, I didn't I didn't need anything from a first aid kit. But even even in work related incident instances, I need a for I need a band aid stuff like that. So I'm thankful to have this back. Um, while I was there. Uh, well, yes. Well, on Saturday, I've actually been on the hunt for Browning High Power. Um, I remember at one show I went to at uh, in June. It was, at, it was at the fairgrounds. I saw one. It was a Canadian English uh, Browning High Power, and the price was marked from it was marked down from four seventy five of a surplus to down to four twenty five. I said I want to I want to get that, but that's when I got I had to get the radiator for the pickup, so I let it pass. Saturday I went to the show, looked around for it. I can't find it, so I said, "You know what? I'm pretty sure someone's bought it." But um, a guy I know, I also want to do a shout out to some <laughs> some friends from the show. Uh, they, and I won't say the last names, but they but if they watch, if they see this video, they know who I'm talking. They, they know they know um, they know who I'm talking about. Mike, you know, well, obviously the, the author of the the book, Mike Long. Uh, you know, thanks. Thank. We give thanks to Dale, uh, both Kennys, Scott, and Jimmy. Jimmy's the guy I, I, uh, I who I saw had his Browning High Power, and you know, I thought about. It. I said, you know, what? I, I was thinking about through, I thinking throughout uh, Saturday night when I was at work. I, said, I think I could. I think I could pick that up. So let me. I went back to the range after I, after I got my first aid kit. He was right by the door. I picked this up. <laughs> This is a brown. This is a Browning High Power. Um, even it says on the side, Browning Arms Company, Morgan, Utah, and Montreal, PQ. And on the side, I don't know if you see that, but it says, uh, "Made in Belgium, assembled in Portugal." And this is a and I finally got my first nine millimeter. About time, cause for all you, for all, for all the people that that um who I, who I know who said, "Why well, get that forty? That single stack forty five? And then well. You want a double stack nine million? So, well, I'm waiting for the right one. I found it. Um, I gotta clean it. Um, you know, I just I do that when I bring home a new gun. Uh, this one's in really good shape. Uh, it uh, it's it has a single action trigger. So you so you, that means when you pull the trigger, it doesn't cock the hammer back. So I have to cock it back each time. Now, one thing I didn't know about this gun, this is a newer one. You see it has the external extractor rather than an internal extractor. That's the one, that's that's the one, well, that's what I like about the Canadian one. The Canadian surplus I had an internal extractor. This one has a like a magazine safety. So with the magazine out, um, you can't drive you can't pull the trigger on it. Which is fine, you know, um, 
I actually took the slide off just before doing this video and I saw how the mechanism works. But you know, put a magazine inside of it, and you know, obviously, well, it's ambidextrous safety. You can see it's down, and it doesn't have like the rounded hammer like you see on a lot of high powers. But this one is actually pretty nice. Now you can see right there, the hammer, the spur is not all that big, so I'm not too worried about getting hammer bite. But uh, it feels very comfortable in my hand. This one came with Packmeyer grips. Um, he lowered the price uh, just a bit, and um, you know, came with two extra mags. One of the mags is pretty interesting. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of this. It's called the uh, oh, Ramline. Let me see, let's show you that logo in the back of it. Ramline. This one, take the base plate off, and there's no there's no spring, but there's still spring tension. What this thing actually has is a roller spring. This uh, rivet on the side holds the roller spring to the follower, and basically uh, you can't uh, you can't really see it, but the, well, if you see right there, you see like a that bright light. Look, it's like, kinda, it looks kind of like a um, like a like a cylinder. That's a spring, and it is rolled up, and as you push down, you know it, it just it, uh, adds tension to the it adds tension to, tension, tension to the spring, and that's how this that's how this follower works. Um, like I said, then now, now there's like I said, there I have to clean this gun out because you see when I push the magazine in, it's 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 a bit it's a bit hard, and it doesn't pop out. I think it could be it could be something with the grips. Could be something where the grips um, is maybe screwed in too tight to where it's digging into the mag well and it's putting too much it's putting tension on the magazine as it's inserted. So I'm gonna fix that problem uh, as I take this gun apart. But this is in good shape. Um, you know, it's like a, basically like a, like it looks like a standard, you know, riding high power. If you've seen one, one thing I will say this: I do like the sights. You know, it has nice high. Uh, the sights on it are pretty high up. Um, I will. I think the paint is worn off because like I had white paint on the, in like these little ridges, um, in the back. So I'm gonna have to repaint those. But um, this is nice. I like it. Um, maybe I'll, maybe someday I'll do a range video if I get the chance to go out. Um, but uh, you know, this is I think this is pretty nice. You know, I the, always want my first. I do. I do. Want, I will say that I always want my first uh, nine millimeter to be a Browning high power. You know, I got a thing for Browning made guns. Um, also, this thing came with a trigger upgrade, which I may remove this. It's like a an expanded trigger. You can see how wide this is compared to how um, standard. Uh, grinding high power triggers are and it has like these two screws you see holding uh holding the trigger uh upgrade to holding the upgrade to the tr to the to the factory trigger um but i may do some i'm gonna do something with that soon but this is nice um also i got i got some uh you know i got a little bit of ammo i got a box of ammo from precision one and i just got some regular ammo from uh from another stand is some, you know, so I got some wolf, uh, wolf gold. Uh, I never knew that. I, you know, I'm I'm new to the world of nine millimeters. I I've, I've been so into forty fives and fifty sevens. I'm learning more about nine millimeters as I go along. Well, um, I didn't know that. I didn't know there was one forty seven grain. But these are jacketed hollow points. Let me see. If I take one out. Gosh, these are so this is much smaller than than forty five, but uh, yeah, this I guess says wolf ammo right there. It's a wolf forty. Uh, it's a wolf uh, nine millimeter hollow point. So hopefully the hopefully these will perform well in my gun. But, yep, that's my video. That's you know these are things I got to show. I got you know I got a novel, socks, a first aid kit back, and. A burning high power. <laughs> so I'd say it was a. I say it turned out to be a pretty good, uh, pretty good, you know, pretty good weekend purchases. Please share your thoughts. Uh, you know, what do you think of the things I bought? Do you got any information about the burning high power that you want to share with me? Um, I'll be interested. To see, I'll, be, I'll be interested in any points and tips. Um, uh, any gripes, complaints? You know, send me a PM. I'll see what I can do to address them. Uh, uh, I look forward to doing. Um, like I said, I look forward to doing a shooting video on this handgun. 
Uh, one thing I do want to get for it is, uh, I don't know, maybe like a like an outside the waistband holster, maybe even a surplus holster, who knows. But that's my video. Uh, back from the gun show. I'm Edward Jones, and thanks for watching.